Maynell Rayon, the first female to play in an NHL contest. Here's the shot on the run, makes a save, rebound! Burn stopped by Maynell Rayon. And that was a great save. Before her history-making game in the NHL, back in the 70s, one little girl in Quebec was definitely breaking the gender rules of hockey. I started playing when I was five years old. My two brothers were playing, and at home they were always shooting pucks at me. I was dressing up as a goalie. After playing in minor hockey with the boys, I got invited to a major junior camp in Trois-Rivières. So I played junior hay that year. And from there, um, I got invited to the Tampa Bay Lightning training camp. I played in a real NHL games, too, actually, the first year against St. Louis, the second year against Boston. The walk between my locker room to the ice, uh, my heart never beat as fast and as hard as that moment. And it was amazing, the feeling, as soon as I stepped on the ice, it went away. And if I think about it, I can relive that moment. When I got invited then, Tampa Bay, I know a lot of people were saying it's just a publicity stunt and why you're doing this and they're using you. I still had to perform. I still had to go out there and face 100 miles an hour shots every single day, getting bruised all over me. Also, the guys, they don't want a girl stopping them, so they shoot even harder on me. I would say most of the players on my team was really good and really supportive. But I had a few teams where one or two guys were not happy with having a girl on the team, and they made my life miserable. I remember one year, this guy just wanted to shoot the puck at my head every practice, and I just had to deal with it and not say a word. I play with the same shoulder pads I was playing when I was peewee, except my dad had a little bit of protection to it. Uh, my dad, before I left, put those two plastic in the front with the tape. Um, but after every practice, I had so much bruise that the trainer started putting some protection to it. So he, he put some foam. You know, they were a little banged up, but it's kind of cool to still have those. After her trials with Tampa Bay, Manon Rayon played pro hockey with men for several seasons. She also represented Canada at two Women's World Championships and the 1998 Olympic Games in Nagano. Like mother, like son. Manon's eldest son, Dylan, has also devoted his hockey career to being a goalie. Dylan currently tends the net for the University of Notre Dame after spending two seasons with the U.S. National Team Development Program. At first, no, I didn't want the boys to play goalie knowing how hard it was, pressure you have to, uh, to be under. I love the pressure when I play the game, but being a mom and watching my son under that pressure, it's so nerve-wracking. You know, I see a lot of me in him when he plays. Goalie, you can be a hero or a zero, <laughs> depending how you play. So it's very rewarding when they're successful, and it's hard when they're not. I'm not going to be the one, you know, telling him what he did wrong, because most of the time he does know. And But sometimes he likes to talk to me about it, just to he, he kind of want to make sure that was it my fault or that was someone else's fault. So. When I was younger, a lot of time people said to me, you cannot do it because you're a girl. And to me, I want to be able to achieve the best that I can be. And uh, that's what, kind of what I'm telling my kids. It's, if that's something you want to do, one, you have to be willing to do the sacrifice to, to make it. And yet you want to be able to aim as the highest as you, you can aim. Manon, it is so nice to see you, but I have to say I would so much rather be having dinner with you in Detroit <laughs> as we got to do earlier this year. Um, and when we had you on Rogers Hometown Hockey also earlier this year, this book, Breaking the Ice, was in the works, and now it is finally out. So congratulations, and tell us the story. How did this all come to be? Yeah, about five years ago, Angie, Angie Berlaro uh, contacted me about uh, doing a movie about my story. She wanted to have a female lead in sports and she wanted to inspire people. So she heard that they had all those women in the 90s that was playing uh, in the NHL. So she's like, what if I research the first one? And when she researched it, she realized only one person playing in the NHL <laughs> and she contacted me about doing a movie. And then she's also a children's book writer. So she went ahead and started uh, writing the children's book too at the same time. So obviously when you craft a children's book, it has a, a certain tone. And I know the idea is really to inspire. So 
what do you want young girls and boys to get out of this story? Yeah, if you have a dream, if you're really passionate about something and you work hard, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish. And you don't need to fit a mold of what you should look like. Uh, I obviously was the total opposite of what an NHL goalie should look like. Uh, my size, my gender, uh, I only speak French. I barely understand any English, but that didn't stop me to accept the invite to go to Tampa Bay. And that's kind of what we want to tell people, like, don't be afraid to try something new, even if people tell you you cannot do it. Which is a message I love. And in the book, you, you do talk about all of these um, instances where you could have thrown in the towel, you know, when you're playing and you have parents yelling at you or coaches are cutting you because you're a girl or all of these things that could have derailed your career, but you persevered. What is it in you, Manon, that makes you and made you keep going? You know, I think it's when I started when I was young, uh, the day that I told my dad, why not me playing hockey at the rink like the boys? And I remember he said, OK, when he accepted, it took me down the basement and start shooting pucks at me to prepare me for the first practice. And uh, one time I got the puck on my shoulder and I start complaining about it. And uh, I said, it hurt. And he said, Mano, get used to it. Said if you want to do netting, it's not going to hurt. But if you're going to play hockey, sometimes the puck's going to hurt. So get used to it. And at that moment, I kind of felt like my dad was telling me something that if you really want to do something, something, sometimes it's going to be hard. Uh, but you just need to, to keep going and you can do whatever you want to do. But those moments specifically when people are harder on you because you're a girl, because you're a woman, what do you have to gather in yourself to to say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to tune that, that noise out. You know, the first time I got cut from a team and my dad never told me that they didn't want a girl in the team. They would not have take me anyway. Uh, but I, I remember being disappointed, but the next day I had something inside of me that wanted to prove those people wrong. And I wanted to make the team the following year. So I start using uh, those rejection as a challenge and as a motivation to get better. And I just kept, you know, getting more motivated every time someone said no to me to the point where, you know, I made it to play uh, in an NHL game. Which is an incredible feat. And to this day, it stands alone. And, you know, I'm really glad that you talked about this in the book. Um, you included the sentiment that the media accused you of being a, a publicity stunt, which I'm sure is something that follows you to this day. And you said, I don't care. What do you say to people who continue to view it sort of only one way? that you were Phil Esposito's pawn, as opposed to you're also a person who wants to capitalize on a very unique opportunity. You know, when I, what I told them, it's when I was younger, people say no to me because I was a girl. So when I finally met, make the double A level, uh, when I was Bantam, every goaltender from the Bantam double A got invited to the midget triple A training camp. And I played well during those two years. And I was not invited because I was a girl. So not being invited in midget AAA, um, you don't get invited to a major junior training camp after. So I had to find a different path. And I took a different path to get back to major junior for only one year. And that's what got me to go to the Tampa Bay training camp. But so I told people, if this time someone invite me because I'm a girl, I'm going to take that chance because at the end of the day, I have to prove myself. And if I would have gotten those chances early on, I may have got the exact same experience and all those guys that was invited to the training camp. And at the end of the day, I had to prove myself there. And even that first time I stepped on the ice, I did not allow any goal in my first scrimmages uh, in 14 shot. I was the only goalie in the four goalie in this game that didn't allow any goal. And it's really after that game that Phyllis Pusto said, after a performance today, you may see her in an exhibition game. It's not like they just gave me an exhibition game without having played well prior to it. Do you think now it's been 28 years, do you think the way people see this story has changed? Absolutely. Uh, it's amazing every time people talk about my story now versus back then. Uh, now they're talking about the performance and how um, that led me to start a game in the NHL. Even uh, Terry Cripps, uh, 20 years after the time, he uh, interviewed me. He was in Nashville with a radio station. 
And he said, when Phil told me a woman was coming to camp, I was not happy about it. But I have to say, you deserve to start that first game because you played well in a mini tournament. You finished in the top three of the goalie during that tournament and you deserve it. And it took 20 years to hear it uh, from someone that was right there in the organization and it felt really, really good. How is your relationship with Phil? You know, we continue to stay in touch uh, a couple of times. Uh, I remember going to Tampa Bay during the Stanley Cup playoff, not this past, obviously, <laughs> Stanley Cup playoff series, but before that, and uh, I had a chance to meet him. Me and Angie actually met him. And after the game, we all went out to have pizza. And, and it was just great to hear so much more story after I left Tampa Bay, what happened with the team and how far the team went. It, it's just absolutely amazing from the time that uh, I was in camp to now. They're the Stanley Cup champions. Are they <laughs> still your team? I mean, is that where your allegiance lies? I always have a soft spot in my heart for Tampa Bay. I was so excited this year, uh, you know, to follow them throughout the playoffs, especially after last year, disappointment in the first round. Uh, I was really uh, like cheering for them. So the book takes your NHL story, uh, but doesn't get into the the team Canada stuff, but I think it's important to touch on the fact that you're a, an Olympic silver medalist. You're a two-time world champion. I'm wondering about jumping from the boys game to the women's game uh, and, and what kind of adjustments you had to make at that time. It was a hard adjustment because the timing was not the same. Um, even the game, the way it's played with the men, uh, because of body checking, you would have like teams dumping the puck even more. Goalie had to come out of the net playing the puck. It was just a different game. So it always took me time to adjust myself to the women game. What about the, the dynamic? I, I have to think, you know, when you're used to changing in a broom closet, <laughs> um, it's different than finally you can be in a, a locker room with your team. Absolutely. I think that was the biggest change, not only in the locker room to finally be with the team and, and talk about all kinds of stuff before and after game, but even on the road, uh, I finally had a roommate on the road and to go have breakfast in the morning and not be by myself. So that was really nice. What I had to face too, when I played for Team Canada, uh, when I was with Tampa Bay, it was like, okay, she's the only female and people like just all the eyes are on me. And then when I was going back and play with Team Canada, that was like, oh, she's the girl that played in the NHL. So now I had that pressure too. So I think the pressure of being different was always the same in, in both the women and the men's game. Huh. That's interesting. When you look back among your achievements as being part of that Olympic team that gave so many young girls and, and women hope to see that sport for them, right? Yes. Um, as far as where hockey is now in, in the women's game, what, what are your thoughts? I'm sure you, like everybody else, would like to see a more organized version. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think from the time I played to now, we came a long way. Uh, just the fact that we see women during the NHL All-Star game, either competing or playing at a three-on-three -three tournament, I think it came a long way, but we still have so far to go uh, with several league that's trying to, to get going. And like, we don't have enough great um, female hockey players. Like we have a lot of great female hockey players, but not enough to have two or three or four leagues. So right. we really need to focus on one league and have the best player in that league, getting the support of the NHL, getting great sponsorship for that league. Uh, and that's what I think we need to, to be successful. Well, there are a couple other roles I want to talk about with you, and that's the role of coach and the role of mother. And I should mention that you actually coached Kendall Coyne Schofield when, when she was young. Did you all like always know she was going to be an absolutely magnificent star? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I coached her first at, at U12, I remember her coming to play on one of my team that was not very strong, and she was by far uh, the best player, but not only she was the best player, but she was the hardest worker on the ice, every shift, every game. And I told myself like, this girl's going to go really far. And to this day, when I coach young girls now, I always talk about Kendall. And uh, I asked my girls, I told the story, how great she was and how hard she worked and look at where she's now. Um, and I asked them, I said, today, we need to be a little Kendall on this team. We need to all work hard. <laughs>
And Manon, you're at the helm of a very successful program with Little Caesars in Michigan, uh, heading up a group of young girls. What is your coaching mission? Not only teach them the game on the ice, but teach them all the life lesson um, that you learn through hockey. And my goal as a coach is to bring the best of each of those girls and, and to give them confidence because that's what you learn in hockey. And when you get confidence and you play well and, and to help you later in life to, to find confidence in yourself uh, to pursue your dream. As a mother, you've coached two young players. Your son is playing NCAA. Um, first of all, what's it like seeing your kids strap on the pads? And do they take your advice as a, as a coach and a mom? Yeah, my uh, oldest one, when he started playing goalie, I think he was four years old when he had those little cute pads and glove and I dressed him up as goalie and I thought he was so cute. And then I regret later to have dressed him up ever as a goalie because the pressure of being a goalie, I absolutely love it when I played. But being the mom of a goalie, it's so stressful. And uh, I, I remember his first big tournament, I called my mom in the morning and I said, you know, I don't know if I'm normal, but he's playing in the final today. And I got butterfly in my stomach and my mom said, it's payback time. So that's when I realized like what she had to go through all those years. So when my youngest one started playing goalie too, and he was doing both player and goalie, and I was hoping he picked player and sure enough, he played they pick players. So it's a lot easier to, uh, to watch him play than my oldest one that is goalie. So I know, I know the movie is also in the works with Angie. What's, uh, what's the progress report on that? You know, with COVID, it kind of like had a stop and everything that we were doing. Uh, I think it's unfortunate, but I think a lot of people are in the same situation right now. So we continue to to work at it and continue to right now spend time on uh, promoting the book and doing things with the book. And um, eventually when we can start moving forward, we will. Well, I think the more people who know and learn about your story, the better. I'm gonna leave you with the question we ask all of our guests. And that is, what is your best advice to a young menno? Just to follow your dream, not be afraid to take risk and not let rejection uh, or adversity stop you for doing what you, you love to do. And uh, by changing your mindset when you're facing something difficult and know that something good is going to come out of any difficult situation, um, it's going to be powerful. Well, you're a great example. And I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Thank you so much for this. Me too. <laughs> Thank you for having me.